Turn my bell here. Kia ora, everyone. Welcome. Let's um, prepare for worship by listening to the words of the Dalai Lama in a song that's been going viral. Every day, think as you wake up. human life and I'm not gonna waste it oh I'm gonna use all my energy to develop and expand my heart to all so I can be Koto, tena koto, tena koto, no mai, hari mai, oopsie, no mai, hari mai, ki tene fare karakia o te atua, no mai, hari mai, ki na manu hire, ko wisaheken, rato ko Delaware, ko Ganeshawana, skuko na awa, ko kita heken, Atlantic, te Moana, ko Tamani, o shakamaksin, te Monga, ko Weira, rato ko. Ingarani, ko Koterana, ko Inga, ko Tiamani, ko Irene, o ko Hanga Whakapapa. And no Bluebell, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, aho. Ke Whangamata Kinlock, Topo, aho e nohoana. And ko David Domenko Herstich, Takutane, ko Orion Mabel, Takutama, ko Sally Mabel, Toko Ingoa. Kia ora mai tato. What did I just say for those of you who don't speak te reo? In its tradition in New Zealand to start with a pepeha or letting people know who you are and where you're from. So what I said was my rivers are Wissahickon, Delaware, and Ganeshawana, the Lenape name for the Schuylkill rivers. My ocean is the Atlantic. My uh, heritage is from England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, and Germany. And I come from Bluebell, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I live now in Kinloch, Bangamata Topo. So my husband is David Domingo Herstich and my son is Orion Mabel, who's in Thailand at the moment. So that's a little bit about me. And um, I'm going to be leading our service today live from Topo. Thank you for those of you who are on Zoom and those in the church. We'll do a little bit of a breakout uh, discussion afterwards. So hopefully you'll stay on Zoom so we can connect. And those of you in the church, uh, stay for morning tea because it's our sacrament of hospitality. I am grateful, I feel honored and privileged to be among such open-minded, open-hearted fellow Unitarians today and friends. And thank you to our wonderful support team of Ted, Paul, Alex, Rachel, John. So many people go into making these services work in a hybrid situation of Zoom and in the church. So we're grateful to all of you. Okay. Let's see. Thank you, whoever you are, for joining us. We who welcome all in our gatherings, the joyful, the heartbroken, atheists, Christians, Muslims and Jews, straight, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, we mean all. All who are searching, seeking, looking for more, more meaning, more service, more love. All of us gathered here today to share our common human journey. And if you're in the building, as I say, please stay for morning tea. Won't be complete without you. 
Um, now, those of you who are in the building, stand as you're able or stand at home if you'd like. We're going to sing what I call the, um, it's a tradition in our church to sing each season. And we've just had autumn equinox. You, guys, you all in the north are in spring equinox. But we're going to sing the chant for the autumn here in New Zealand. We'll sing it through twice. Summertime has turned the star wheel, autumn is upon us. Summertime has turned the star wheel, autumn is upon us. Sweet the angling sun, sweet upon the air, the smell blue mist rising summertime has turned the star wheel autumn is upon us glorious the trees glorious the sight of rust leaves falling falling summertime has turned the star wheel autumn is upon us from the top Summertime has turned the star wheel, autumn is upon us. Summertime has turned the star wheel, autumn is upon us. Sweet the angling sun, sweet upon the air, the smell of blue mist rising. Summertime has turned the star wheel, autumn is upon us. Glorious the trees, glorious the sight of rust leaves falling, falling. Summertime has turned the star wheel, autumn is upon us. And my opening words today are adapted from the Unitarian Universalist minister, Reverend Ian Riddell of the UU Church of the Desert in Rancho Mirage, California. Come, come, whoever you are. Do you hear that voice calling you, calling us? That voice which calls us together here today in this space and time made holy by our presence and by the sacred breath we share in our singing and speaking and silence. That voice which calls us to remember that we are not alone and that we are inextricably linked to all other life, woven into a vast tapestry of existence of which we are a powerful, integral, and holy part. And just as we've been called together here today, we act as the voice, the heart, and the hands of another call. The call to walk with the wanderers, to sing and dance with the worshipers, to proclaim the memory of those who have taken their leave, and to wrap the despairing and the broken in the arms of love and community, and hold the hands of all of us who have broken our vows and call us back again and again to the covenant and work of justice, humility, and steadfast faithfulness. For this, we are here together today. So my friends, come yet again, come. Let us worship together. And now it's time to light the chalice. So Ted, if you would come forward and light the chalice in the building and I will light our chalice here for us on Zoom. If you've got a candle at home and you want to light a candle, feel free to do that. It's our tradition. As we light this flame, let us all celebrate, let us marvel at the fact that we are alive and life is breathing us today. Breath of life, breathe in us, with us, through us, this day as we gather, one in community, one in commitment to truth, love, and justice. Open our minds and hearts to the new that's always being created. Come, my friends, let's celebrate. Let's marvel, let us be filled with awe. Come, let us worship together. 
And now let's join together in saying the covenant of our church, which is love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is our sacrament and service is our prayer to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humankind in fellowship to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony. Thus do we covenant with each other and with our God. Put the candle back here. <clears throat> I'm going to silence my phone quickly. <clears throat> okay. And now it's our Unitarian Anthem time, Spirit of Life. Spirit of life, come unto me, sing in my heart all the stirrings of compassion. Now I'd like to welcome all the children out there or the young of heart to come up to the front. Normally at this time, before the COVID times, we had children come up and gather around the clay's knee and he would read a story that we all loved, but we're going to do it anyway. And I'm going to talk to the children and all of us and encourage you to um, talk to your children about these stories that we're going to talk about. So children, today I'm going to ask you, um, do you know, today I'm going to talk to your parents about breathing. And do you know any other words for breathing? Anybody? You can unmute yourself. Any know another word for breathing? Hmm. That's all right. I'll tell you. Um, it's inspiration and expiration. Inspiration. We take in the spirit of life. And we expiration, we send it out. Did anyone ever teach you how to breathe? How did you learn? Do you know that when you get upset or when you get mad, that breathing is an excellent way to calm your emotions and calm your mind? And also like if you're studying and you're at school and you feel confused to breathing helps clear your mind. Well, I'm going to show you a couple little quick little songs that'll help you breathe. And I, I encourage your parents, I Googled breathing songs and there's tons on YouTube and they're really fun. I had a hard time deciding. I could have done the whole hour on children's breathing songs, but here's some of my favorites. Here we go. Alex, do you want to play that one? I, I love that one. Here's another fun one. And I want to introduce it by saying it's a, the Tadeo Maori version. And there's a couple of Tadeo Maori versions out there, but this is a nice short one, just two minutes. And the words for breathe in, breathe out are ha kiroto, ha kiwaho, ha kiroto, ha kiwaho. Alex. Roll them. Thank you, Alex. I love those. There's some really great ones. There's rainbow breathing where you breathe in red. There is um, a Maori uh, one where you breathe with all the gods, like breathe in Tangaroa with the water breath and bring in the earth breath. Oh, there's wonderful creativity out there. So it's now time for us to sing the children off to their um, 
religious education. Here we go. Ready? Go now in peace. Go now in peace. May the spirit of love surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Bye. So they go off to their religious education and we have our, um, what we call our musings, our random musings. So before that, we're going to have um, a Koha song. Koha means um, donation, collection, um, giving of our abundance and our generosity and our gratefulness. So we're going to sing a traditional song. In Brisbane, they sing this three times as their Koha hymn. Here we go. From, from you I receive to you I got the chords on. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, by this we live. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, by this we live. Okay. <sighs> We have time to pass the bags there in the church. Thank you for your generosity. And for those of you who are online, the church has an account number. Um, everybody ap appreciates donations if, as you're able and feel called. Let us take a moment, let us take a breath, and let us pray. Spirit of life, as we breathe in, we receive you into our hearts now. And as we breathe out, we experience your peace. Thank you for inspiring us with your presence. And in turn, may we inspire others to experience the joy of being alive. May we be your messengers in this world, bringing peace, love, joy, and healing with every breath, wherever we go. Amen. Blessed be. So, during my 12 years at Auckland Unitarian Church, I was a lay worship leader and member of the Peace and Social Justice Committee. And we sang that Spirit of Life song hundreds of times. I think every week. I'm, I don't know if you do it as a tradition now. I think they do. Um, to begin every Sunday service. Now, I'd like to draw our attention directly to that same spirit of life, which is intimately with us in every moment. And I'm talking about our very breath. Literally, our inspiration and our expiration. I invite you, as you're sitting there today, to just experiment and play with your breath as you're listening to me. Let this service not just be a talk, but an actual exercise for you. Our gift, our breath, is a free gift we receive at birth, and it's our closest and most constant companion throughout our whole life until we exit. For many people today, the anthropomorphic concept of God doesn't speak to us, and something tangible like breath is more relatable. I was recently involved in a two-year uh, ministry training in t and uh, I guess you call it meditation training called God is Breath which involved daily breathing and awareness exercises to build my awareness of breath as the spirit of life. This enhanced awareness has made a huge difference to me in terms of greater patience, tolerance, resilience, and has helped me to be so much less reactive to emotional challenges. So I'm passionate about sharing this with you today and, and the theme, breathing the spirit of life. So how aware are you of your breath and why does it matter? And how aware are you of the rhythm and ease or dis-ease of your breathing? 
As Unitarian Universalists, we are concerned with world peace and social justice. We don't have time for this breathing stuff. Um, and we're aware that there's so much discord, unrest, conflict in the world today. We need to be active. We need to do some things. We read about it every day and watch videos, and but we get angry. You know, we get angry and we want revenge and we feel the same anger that people in the conflict around the world may be feeling. And what do we do with it? How do we control it? How do we manage it? How much do we focus? Um, as we said, I'm sorry, we, got, we are aware that people are dealing with discontent, unhappiness, um, depression. And how do we manage our own anger, fear, and upset? If we're going to be lights in this world, walking and being messengers of peace, we've got to actually embody peace. And it's understandable why many of us are feeling despairing, helpless, and hopeless, and angry. There's a lot to feel despairing, helpless, and hopeless about, and angry about. But besides donating money, writing letters, or demonstrating, what can we actually do to contribute to world peace? How much do we focus on what we give in what I call our own locus of control. We've got the locus of control, like our friends and family, our locus of concern, our, you know, our community, and then the farther out you get, it's the locus of gossip in terms of our control. Um, how much attention do you give to your very breath, which is what you can really manage on your own? And how can that contribute to disharmony and conflict in your own life and in the world at large? According to Thich Nhat Hanh, the Buddhist teacher and author who recently passed away, we will always blame and condemn those we feel are responsible for wars and social injustice. It's a, it's a gut reaction to blame without recognizing the degree of conflict in ourselves. We must devote ourselves to practicing inner peace, which involves mindful breathing if we wish to contribute to world peace. I remember Thich Nhat Hanh getting interviewed by Oprah, and Oprah said, how come you're not out there? You're so powerful. You're an author. You've got thousands of people listening to you. How come you're not out there demonstrating and doing more? And he realized, he said, you know, people have to realize on their own, Oprah that it's all about their breath and unless they come to that, no amount of action is going to help. Breath is central to many cultures and spiritual traditions around the world. Here are a few examples. The word aloha in Hawaii is similar to our Maori aroha, which means aro, presence, ha, breath, the presence of breath. Aroha, aloha. When broken down, the literal translation, auto, presence, and ha, breath, also means love, peace, respect. So we can actually breathe in love, peace, and respect. Ha, hiroto, and ha, aloha. Breathe out the presence of love, peace, and respect. In fact, apparently in Jesus' native language of Aramaic, ancient Hebrew Aramaic, he called God Allaha. Allaha. Sound a bit like Aloha, Aroha, Allaha, Allaha, Allaha. Oh God, Allaha. In Arabic, Ru, Ru means breath or spirit. Ruach in Hebrew means Holy Spirit or wind. In ancient Greek, pneuma, numinous, pneuma means breath, air, or divine inspiration. Numinous means of the sacred or of the divine, pneuma. Pneuma, lung, we talk about pneumatic fever and new, you know, uh, new, pneumatic stuff, all about the lungs and breath. It can also mean life, spirit, and vitality. <clears throat> In Latin, the word is numen which means divine will or inexpressible mystery. What we call the interconnected web of all existence, um, in India, the Sanskrit word is prana, stands for life force or breath. It's central to yogic, ancient Indian philosophy, yogic philosophy and practice. In China, it's chi, and moving the chi is what they're taught as 
moving our life force and energy in the martial arts, in uh, Qigong, spiritual practice. In Japan, it's a key. It's the glue that connects body, mind, and spirit. So clearly, breath needs our attention. It's central of importance in our life and our sense of peace and inner harmony. So what are the greater implications of our awareness of breath? We each are literally receiving and releasing the spirit of life an average of 20,000 times a day, seven and a half million times a year, according to the American Lung Association. Most of us aren't entirely mindful of each in-breath and out-breath, and yet numerous studies have been done which hail the benefits of mindful breathing. The word often used for this simple awareness is mindfulness. In thousands of studies, mindful breathing practice has been shown to produce numerous benefits. I'm sure you've heard of it, but I'll just refresh us for, for a second. Lower anxiety, depression, and stress. It increases focus, concentration, memory, and cognitive control. It improves decision-making. It enhances pro-social, generous, optimistic behaviors. It improves sleep quality and general well-being, increases clarity, quality, strategic thinking, reduces blood pressure, decreases tiredness, aches, and pains. I feel certain that you've got at least one of those things on that list that could use some support with mindful breathing. How would it be, how would it impact, impact our world if more of us were devoted to developing these qualities and experiencing these benefits? How would this contribute to world peace? It's starting to become into the schools. I learned when I was teaching the other week, I learned box breathing. You heard of that one. Box breathing is you go in, you write a box, in for four, hold, out for four, hold, in for four. And the kids all drew a box and they got really calm. It really worked. So this is my new teacher classroom management technique. Um, an unhealthy breathing rhythm can often result in a sense of fear and lack which increases self-obsession and leads to greater disinterest in the well-being of others. So literally, healthy breathing can make us more generous and giving, pro-social, empathetic. Breathing in a more relaxed, healthy way supports us to live happier, more peaceful lives, which allows us to feel more compassion and care for the well-being of others, which is what we get angry about sometimes, that people can't feel that empathy, compassion, care. Maybe they're just not breathing right. When we have the capacity to care for others, we can more easily take action for world peace and social justice. Psychotherapist Donna Martin wrote in, the, in a poem, in the words of the spirit of life, the breath is life's teacher. Observe me, says the breath, and learn to live effortlessly in the present moment. Feel me, says the breath, and feel the ebb and flow of life. Allow me, says the breath, and I'll sustain and nourish you, filling you with energy and cleansing you of tension and fatigue. Move with me, says the breath, and I'll invite your soul to dance. Make sounds with me, and I shall teach your soul to sing. Follow me, says the breath, and I'll lead you out to the farthest reaches of the universe and inward to the deepest parts of your inner world. Notice, says the breath, that I am as valuable to you coming or going, that every part of my cycle is as necessary as another, that after I'm released, I return again and again. And even after a long pause, Moment when, moments when nothing seems to be happening, eventually I'm there. Each time I come to you, says the breath, I am a gift from life. And yet I am released without regret, without suffering, without fear. 
Notice how you take me in, says the breath. Is it with joy? With gratitude? Do you take me in fully? Invite me into all the inner spaces of your home? Or carefully into just the front foyer? What places in you am I not allowed to nourish? And notice, says the breath, how you release me. Do you hold me prisoner in closed up places in the body? Is my release resisted? Or you do, do you let me go reluctantly, not easily, or fully? Ha! I always tell people when they're singing, it's not about, it's about releasing a full breath, which allows the full breath to come back in. And are my waves of breath of life, this is back to Donna, and are the waves of breath of life as gentle as a quiet sea, softly smoothing, sandy stretches of yourself? Or are they anxious, urgent, choppy waves or the crashing tumult of a stormy sea? And can you feel me as the link between your inner and outer worlds? Suggests the breath. Feel me as life's exchange between the universe and you. The universe breathes me into you and you send me back to the universe. I am the flow of life between every single part and the whole. Your attitude to me, says the breath, is your attitude to life. Welcome me, embrace me fully. Let me nourish you, complete me, and then set me free. Move with me, dance with me, sing with me, sigh with me. Love me, trust me, don't try to control me. I am the breath, life is the musician, you are the flute and music. Creativity depends on all of us. You are not the creator, nor the creation. We are all part of that process of creativity. You, life, and me, the breath. You can find that, uh, Paul will put a link up to that afterwards. Thich Nhat Hanh, known as the father of mindfulness, was a peace activist, prolific author, poet and teacher, and founder of Plum Village, Europe's largest Zen monastery, to over 200 monks and nuns. And he taught and practiced mindful breathing to thousands of people throughout his life. I'd like to share with you his words on mindful breathing. And I encourage you, pay t attention as I read this, Pay attention to your breath as I recite the words. Use it as an exercise. Breathing in. I know I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know I am breathing out. Breathing in. I notice my in-breath has become deeper. Breathing out. I notice that my out-breath has become slower. Breathing in. I calm myself, breathing out. I feel at ease. Breathing in, I smile. Breathing out, I release. Breathing in, I dwell in the present moment. Breathing out, I feel it is a wonderful moment. Mevlana Jalaluddin Rumi's poem, Only Breath, echoes the centrality of the simple, universal, human process of breathing, the spirit of life, its most basic spiritual activity that we all share, no matter what the religion. Only Breath, the title of the poem. Not Christian or Jew or Muslim, not Hindu, Buddhist, Sufi or Zen, not any religion or cultural system. I am not from the East or from the West, not out of the ocean or up from the ground. I'm not natural or ethereal, not composed of elements at all. I do not exist. I'm not an entity in this world or the next. I did not descend from Adam or Eve or any origin story. My place is the placeless, a trace of the traceless, neither body or soul. I belong to the beloved. I have seen the two worlds as one, and that one call to know, first, last, outer, inner, I am only that, breath, breathing human being. Rumi's poem points to the essential 
and universal nature of human existence, what is one mystery we all share in common despite our different philosophies and worldviews? Breath. The mystery of breath, spirit of life, life force, wairua, chi, prana, ruach, aloha, aroha, ha kiroto, ha kiwaho, aroha. Amen. Blessed be. Namaste. I'd like you to join me in our closing song, and then we're going to have time for a little 15 minute breakout discussion room um, after we close the service. Yes. The, the lyrics Alex is putting up. Okay, and this is again, you can Google this online. There's lots of versions, but this is my version. Let's see. Oops, excuse me. So we're going to extinguish our chalices. If you have a, um, if you've got a candle at home, this is the time to blow it out. And we say, as flame is to spirit, spirit is to breath, and breath is to song. Though we extinguish the flame in this gathering, may we tend it in our hearts until we meet again. And all together we say, we extinguish this flame but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we meet again. And my closing words are by Susan Carlson. Blessed by our connections. We leave blessed by our connections to one another, to the spirit of life. Walk lightly as you see the life that is below your feet. Spread your arms as if you had wings and could dance through the air. Feel the joy of the breath in your lungs and the fire in your heart. Live to love and to be a blessing on this earth. Amen. Blessed be. Namaste. How do you manage your own anger, sadness, despair, reactivity? And what have you discovered by working with your breath? Yeah.